You know, I've always been a bit rubbish at quizzes. <laughs> the wooden spoon always seems to have my name on it. But I do love setting quiz questions. So, here's a conundrum. <laughs> Sorry, that's a long word for puzzle. So here is a little conundrum just for you. What links these items? An iconic Art Deco building, number 55 Broadway in London, the headquarters of the London Underground. A very ordinary chunk of Essex Flint, an unusual wedding venue in Hertfordshire, and this medieval cottage in Perry Green. <laughs> Well, the answer to the conundrum is sculpture and the work of one of the greatest British sculptors of the 20th century, Henry Moore. The facade of 55 Broadway has statues representing the four winds, as well as works by Eric Gill and Jacob Epstein. One statue called West Wind was Moore's first public commission. Henry Moore got much of his inspiration from the shapes of flints and his studio is littered with stones he'd picked up over the years. The wedding venue and the cottage are part of Moore's legacy to the nation. His house and gardens at Perry Green near Bishop Stortford in Hertfordshire. And the title that I've given this film, The Seven and Five Society, was a group of modernist artists, seven painters and five sculptors that included Ben Nicholson, Barbara Hepworth and Henry Moore. In 1972, with the help of his daughter Mary, he set up the Henry Moore Trust to protect his estate from death duties. And from this, he established the Henry Moore Foundation. The foundation was established to encourage the appreciation of the visual arts, especially the works of Moore, and it now runs his house and estate. A visit to the Sculpture Park and galleries will allow you to get close and personal with Henry Moore's monumental bronze and stone statues and to walk into his studio workspaces. Does Henry Moore capture the imagination of today's artists? Madeline is a sculpture student at the Edinburgh University School of Art. On her first visit to Perry Green, she was immediately absorbed by the works on display. What was it that so fascinated her? Yeah, they're quite empowering and they're, they're very big. I, I prefer personally at the moment to work small scale. So uh, to see and, and to see this piece of work that he had made and so big as well. And it was a really nice quality to be able to touch it, and feel it and see what it sounded like and the way it moved. And, and as I went on to, to see that his work um, was mainly inspired from natural forms which were originally very small and then making maquettes and then went on to make them very big. That's definitely inspired me to realise that maybe once you've formed the idea as a basic from being small that being huge would, would um, cover well in, in the natural world. And I mean all the colours were very calming. It was all very um, soothing and easy and natural light. And, uh, his, all of his materials were quite relatable and his thought process was very clear. He seemed like a really nice, gentle guy that respected nature and wanted to 
show other people the way he saw objects and, and what he was inspired by, by the human figure. And I mean, I love walking along the beach and I often pick up pebbles and things, but I don't always see uh, the human figure. But I think it, it's now definitely changed. <laughs> I'm definitely seeing a lot of where he's coming from. And yeah, it's nice to see that he was more interested in the human form and, and seeing that relate back into nature, which is where we originated from. And well, recently I've just been uh, going to a few lessons at the Royal Drawing School and I think just from that it's just really nice to be able to use drawing as a material to, to sketch down your thoughts. And um, Originally when I was much younger I was taking a lot more photos and it, that doesn't really capture what you're seeing, it's what everyone else is seeing. And in this one I did just of the etchings that he had done of, of a hand. It gives this sort of a free style. One of the first sculptures you come in to see is a family one, which uh, clearly showed family with a huge importance towards him and his child. And as you walk around there, you almost instantly come across this called the double oval. And it's these two huge sculptures, almost uh, symmetric to one another. Although Henry Moore is best known as a sculptor, he was an exceptionally talented and prolific draftsman, producing a body of nearly 7,500 drawings over seven decades, including many of the sheep in the pasture outside his drawing studio. In the Second World War, Moore was recruited as a war artist because he had produced some powerful drawings of Londoners sleeping in the London Underground while sheltering from the Blitz. Most of Moore's works are of the female form. The strong personality of his mother undoubtedly played a part. In his career, he only ever created four male forms. The King in The King and the Queen, the Father in his various interpretations of the family group, the Fallen Warrior, and one called Reclining Male that is listed as having been destroyed. Examples of the first three can all be seen at Perry Green. The works do change from year to year and are fascinating even in the rain. and apparently statues have been stolen so elaborate frameworks are attached and dug into the ground making moving the pieces almost impossible. You may get lucky and see a wedding using the TP bar. The downside to that is that you would not be able to view the Henry Moore tapestries. A converted 16th century barn, which is also the wedding venue, makes the ideal exhibition space for his designs that have all been woven by the West Dean College in Sussex. Scattered around the estate are the many studios that Henry Moore built to accommodate his ever larger work. From the maquette room to the plastic studio, there is a real sense that the artist has just stepped out for a breath of fresh air. All the clutter of a working environment is there. In the end, it is the statues outside that give the lasting memories. It is how Moore saw his works being displayed with space to move around them, to stand back and discover the amazing forms of the sculptures. Most of all, Henry Moore wanted to promote art education and the support of young artists. Yeah, I'd love to, to be um, a living, a practical living artist and working in, in my practice. But ultimately, I, as long as I stay in contact with the right people and um, 
the further on I go, I'm starting to realise that it, it doesn't always happen straight away. And it, you know, I mean, he's um, got a scholarship at the Royal Drawing School and then taught there for several years and then went on to do his practice. Henry Moore said of his own work, the secret of life is to have a task, something you devote your entire life to, something you bring everything to, every minute of the day for the rest of your life. And the most important thing is, it must be something you cannot possibly do. Thank you.